Oh, hey there guys, Alton here, um, aka Retro Old School. Well, Ed, if I seem a little bit uh, off, it's because the fucking camera is off on my phone. Um, I didn't buy this phone, one of my subscribers gave it to me, like, not even two years ago. And um, it's just, I noticed this, like anywhere where there's any bright light, I'm coming off like all brighter than usual. It almost looks like foggy even, I don't know how to explain it. It's Anybody who knows anything about a Motorola Droid, I tried to even fucking find the settings to see if I can make it not so bright and... Nah, no cigar, but on the other hand, if I turn the, if I stop this and turn the image around as I'm going to do now, you're going to see when you, look, when you look at this book, it looks fine. It doesn't look overexposed or underexposed. In other words, too bright or too dark, so... There's the book in question here on my lap. And, um... Yeah, again, I'm looking at this uh, as it's recording it. It looks fine. It looks well exposed. And I don't know. It's the damnedest thing. I must, maybe I fucked something up with this camera. I don't know. I just had the, the battery replaced. So I guess maybe it wasn't the battery. I don't know, man. But uh, anyway, I've been meaning for some time to make a video of this, uh, this book because uh, it's just it's, it's one of the most phenomenal books I've ever seen. What do you think, Lauren? Hmm? Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, and uh, the funny thing is that I, I bought my own copy. This isn't mine. This is my friend Julian's. He lent it to me. But once he showed it to me, a matter of fact, he showed it to me, uh, I don't know, over a month ago. Uh, we were on the bus, actually, going to the same shelf flea market. And he showed it to me on the Arctic Scrap on the 67 route. And I was fucking blown away. When I had heard about this book, I thought it was just really text more than anything, frankly. And I met one of the authors. Um, uh, what's his name again? Denis... Um, uh, yeah, sorry, Benoit Cléroux. Uh Not not surprising, not coincidentally, on, on, on one or two of the New Look buses a few months back. And uh, he was giving a tour about uh, Montreal transit history. And uh, the only thing I'm going to say right off the bat before I forget that I don't like about this book, the only thing, and it's not the scrap factor in here, because this is the most thorough book ever made about Montreal public transportation. As a matter of fact, so much so, it would probably take me hours for me to really show you everything in detail and in length. Uh, but um, the only thing I don't like is that you see, so, sans ans de bus à Montréal, uh, which, which translates to 100 years of buses in Montreal. But the thing is, is even when he gave the tour, that guy, uh, Benoit, uh, you know, he kept saying le bus, you know, le bus, on prenait le bus, and I don't know, it just doesn't sound weird. Maybe it's because I grew up in the West, West Island where there's, like, really so many Anglophones. So people, even the French people would say, ma prendre le bus. That's how people would say it, you know. Um, that's how people would talk. It was normal for decades for it to be French, you know, and English uh, mixed together. Anyway, whatever, well, other than that, I don't, it doesn't really matter, you know. So, you know, the front, front picture here, of course, the uh, Canadian car brills, uh, um, sorry, the one in the back. Yeah, they're both brills. They look like they're downtown or Côte de Neige. They are on um, René Lévesque Boulevard, I believe, or at that time, Dorchester. Anyway, but like I said, I'm not going to do... Look at the whole fucking thing because it'll take forever. But look at this. This is a group picture back in the day. Uh, one of the garages. I don't know which one. Saint Denis, Saint Henri with one of the old, one of the first buses, if not the first bus, and then clever enough, look at this, then at the end, there's another group picture with more employees, with, you know, the buses I love, obviously, and here's the back of it, just to give you, uh, people a, a view uh, of what's inside, and if you think that's something, it's just mind-boggling, because you're going to see here in a moment, uh, anyway, how it, I want to keep it, you know, surprising there, there's the authors right there. A vraiment bon job, les gars. C'est incroyable, ça. Et by the way, vous devriez faire une version en anglais. C'est quelqu'un, vous autres, je suis sûr que vous allez voir cette vidéo-là. Faites ça en anglais, là, parce que vous allez en vendre en tabarnak. Parce qu'il y a bien des maniaques d'autobus en action anglophone aussi. So I was just saying to any of these guys who see this video, get this book published in English, because even my video of this is going to help sell this book, which I think may be available at the STM Boutique in Montreal. I don't know, find it online, I forgot to check to see if they had it, but I know they have die-cast buses and other, you know, public transit paraphernalia. So, again, so you got some old school stuff here. Uh, you know, there's the good old, that's, 
you know, that's imperative that there. As a matter of fact, that probably should have been a new look on the cover because that's the most recognized and, and beloved buses of all transit buses ever made. And I'm not talking about highway coaches or tour buses or anything, you know. So, moving along, and look at this. You see, it's all split into all the different generations. The 70s, 60s, the 30s, the 80s, you know, and then you got uh, some pictures. This is some of the pictures of the editors when they were kids. Again, even that's brilliant, you know. Uh, just just to show how how uh, fanatical uh, about buses they they were uh, at that time when they were kids. Because even me, I always liked all kinds of vehicles. Uh, but frankly, like when I was a kid, uh, I had a, a train set, and then I lost interest. Whatever you know, I got into a teenager, I lost interest, and then I got really heavy into taking pictures of buses after my dad died. Frankly, in early 2006, there there's one of the uh, one of the bus fans right there is a driver. Okay. Oh yeah, Grey Line. Yeah, brief stint, Montreal Grey Line. Uh, they briefly worked together for a few years or several. And um, but I want to just like try to skip ahead here because there's so much in here. Like I said, it's going to use up my whole fucking phone battery. There's the streetcars. You know, the tramway as we call them in French. And uh, yeah, this is kind of sad and depressing, but we're. So there's one of the first buses, right? It was a GMC, I believe. And it just, it's just, look, it just, look at this. It just, okay, so the first bus, then you have the first, some ads, right? Montreal Transport Tramways Commission, and then became the Montreal Transportation Commission. Look at that, the pictures of the oldest bus stop signs. And the book is not just the bus stop signs, they have vintage, a section on vintage ads, they have a section on the bus shelters. Everything related to buses, the bus maps. I even have a vintage map from 63. I would never sell that. Never. Look at that. It's Yellow Coast, GMC. Um, well, I don't know all of these. You know, look at this one's got tandem wheels on it. There's another one. That's, that, must, that couldn't have lasted too long because that would have been more fuel. And there was nothing diesel back then. It was all gas. Diesel didn't start really coming in until the 30s and 40s for buses. And even in the 40s, they were still a lot of make, They were gas powered, like Fords and stuff. And, just absolutely fantastic, and you know, uh, obviously, uh, some of these photos are from obviously from you know STM archives. So you know, you have to have to thank them as well, of course. For you know, I can't say like I did in one video that they didn't care about history. If they didn't fucking care about history. They wouldn't have, you know, submitted these guys to to use any photo they want practically for this book. You know, and there's the Atwater monster uh, made in uh, Syracuse. Uh, yeah, and it was yeah. Look at this. I had eight wheels, man. <laughs> eight wheels and eventually it just broke in half yeah made by a company called Versari as this one was too and this one I even thought about doing a drawing of one of these but I'm such a weirdo I thought about doing one of these not this because I thought it looked like a streetcar really it looks like a fucking streetcar you know like a bus tickets I know some of you actually might have some of these I don't collect this stuff I'm not into it because it's just really small look at that bus transfers metro transfers Amazing. I mean, look, you know, look at the bus passes. You know, I even have a couple of these actually, or two, three, four, I don't know. You know, and, and again, I gotta move this along. This is getting long and long in the tooth, as they say. But look, I mean, you know, uh, here's some workers here. This is, you gotta get this book. It's gonna cost you, no joke, almost 45, 50 bucks, but it's worth every penny. This is the most comprehensive and detailed book on and city of Montreal transit buses ever made. And I even doubt that, that, that there's a city in the rest of Canada that has ever done a book that comes close to this. Seriously. It's, it's just phenomenal. Look at this. Here's all the, the old terminuses, uh, Garland, and uh, I don't know, wherever else there, Côte d'Anage. Incredible. Bus garages, 40s, 30s, 50s. Here's some Mac buses, Mac GMC, uh, and the, uh, the Canadian car, Brill, old uh, GM, old looks. I mean, just it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Look, here's some service vehicles, right? Supervisor vehicles, generally. Incredible. Look at that fucking snowblower, for Christ's sake. It looks like a Sikor, a Sikor a snowblower, probably. Or this one could be a Walter, I don't know, but... I'd say it's probably Sikov because they were made in Quebec. Look at this. Old Brills. These ones uh, were ordered by the um, 
the Montreal transport, the MTC, uh, up until uh, 58. But then, of course, uh, General Motors took over in sales for buses for every almost every city in North America. And that, that stayed like that for decades. Just goes to show you that was a time when, you know, if it wasn't broke, it didn't need to be changed. But we don't fucking live in a time like that anymore, as you know, unfortunately. There's the New Look era. These, these were a ser special series of buses right here for, uh, they were tour buses. It didn't last though, obviously. There's the first New Looks. And look, it just, it's incredible. Check this out. This is the, the different New Looks in series, photos in series, right? So look, this one was a 41,000, meaning it, where they were made from 68 and 69. This one was a 51 series, uh, 5101, uh, uh, 1967 models. And you can see some of them are brown because they were originally brown, right, as before, you know, like 60s and earlier. But then in 73, they uh, they, they changed the color to blue, which was a, quite an improvement. So, um, and again, I, it's not that I feel nervous. It's just that uh, I can't capture how amazing all of this is. I mean, even some of these pictures, I've stared at some of them for several minutes because there's the famous Brill. This bus should be here in Montreal, for Christ's sake. It's in fucking Grammy. It's been there for years. It was offered to the STM for, I mean, a lot of money. I think almost 100000 if not that. But they refused to buy it. And Tabarnak, they should have bought it because this is one of the most important. This is probably, in my opinion, the most valuable uh, vehicle related to Montreal history ever, ever, and that exists still. Um, and it was restored completely in like 2002, 2003, I think. And just, it's, it's such a shame that it's still... Uh, uh, wait a minute, I didn't even look at this photo here. This was when it was being restored, I think. Yeah, this was when the interior was being restored. I was lucky to actually see this bus in Granby in uh, 2004. You see the camera's getting out of, uh, getting warm because it's getting out of focus there. I saw this bus in Granby and, oh my god, it was just, what a marvel. Um... Anyway, it should be here in Montreal. It's just ridiculous. Now, I don't have anything against Granby, but... So there's some more new looks. Max. More uh, GMO look. Brills. I'm telling you, you guys got to get this book. Never mind, I don't care if the fucking shipping is 10, 20 bucks, man. Because this is really... If you're a real fan of Montreal, especially buses, and you lived here, you live here, you lived here... It, 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 you gotta have this book. I'm not getting anything out of like making this video. It's just except for you know maybe a few bucks for my usual revenue from from my videos. But uh, I'm just proud to have this. It's um, and I have many trend, uh, car books and uh, but really nothing else in terms of like it's mostly all car books really. You know maybe there's a couple of truck books, a few of those, but I don't have any other bus books. This is it. Look at this. This is the uh, emergency metro unit. How cool is that? Is that cool or what? Look at those rear doors, man. Custom made. Very cool stuff. You know, and um, and just to finish with, let me switch hands here. Um, I'm used to filming with the other hand. I want to get to the classics. GM, MCI, Nova Bus classics, you know. More looks. This is into the 80s here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was at a time when there were coaches. There's the classics. Shit, I went by it, eh? Look at that. That's all the different garages. There's uh, there's the demonstrator models. Volvo and uh, Van Hool, I think. I've got a few. Got a few of these, thanks to my one of my subscribers. Thanks again, man. Appreciate the uh, the gift with all the vintage maps and stuff. Look at that. That was during the flood in '87. Pontiac Grand Am there. The first new looks '83. Yeah, you see the uh, and these ones are um, yeah, well, these are the '89s. '89 uh, new, uh, classics. MCI. But anyway, that's it, you guys. You get the whole uh, gist of this here. I'm just skimming through this quickly. This is in the 90s. Even me, myself, I've got like, I think I have hundreds of photos of classics. Uh, even in slight form. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, 
Yeah, it's just really cool. It just makes you, uh, you know, you can't, you can't, um, you can't go back in time. You know, this is these are the only, only ways you can do. It. You can do that with music. You can do that with stuff like this and enjoying photos and, um, you know, maybe some listening to some old school music uh, to go along with this. But uh, this is it. You can only move forward. But you know, it's it's great to look at something time and time again and notice things you didn't notice before. You know. Here's one of the Resho, Resho buses. These are the buses that would drive around and feed warm meals to uh, to kids, uh, underprivileged kids, you know. So, yeah, there's the LFS there, second gens. I hope this video turns out well because, like I said, I was worried about the camera quality. I feel like something's not right about it. It looks okay now, but it's, I don't know, something about bright light. Not, or it doesn't work too well, but it's filming well. It's been filming 15 minutes non-stop, so it shows that the battery's in good shape. Very good, very good. Well, that said, guys, well, we're going to skip by this fucking shit. <laughs> Sorry, but tabardak. But I must say, the 40,000s, the 39, especially the 40,000s, especially the brand new 2020 LFSs, they are so smooth. They're smoother, I think, than any LFS ever made. And look at this, I look forward to riding this. Speaking of smooth, new flyers are known to have a smooth ride. Yes, I've been on a few, especially in Ottawa and Saskatoon and stuff, and uh, look forward to riding that. This is when, look at that, when New Looks had uh, ad wraps. How cool is that, eh? See, that's one of the other reasons I wish I'd I was taking photos of New Looks uh, back when they were around, but I wasn't, into, I wasn't really into buses at that time. I was more normal. Oh, I got a picture of this one, though. This one and this one have photos of those. And I don't remember ever seeing classics with, with wraps on them. I think it's because I lived in the West Island at that time. I don't know. You know, my youth in the 80s and until, up until my parents split. There you go, guys. So, again, I'm really, uh, <clears throat> really pr uh, proud to bring you this as a Montrealer. It shows how, how our city rocks to be able to uh, to to buy and, and, and enjoy looking through time and time again a book like this. And also, I forgot to mention... That uh, you know, for those of you, especially also who are younger than me, I'm 44, much younger, and don't didn't have a, the the chance to write on, let's say, many classics, or let alone the new looks and brills and all that. Well, did, you're not going to take a virtual ride, but you can really get a really good look in a comfortable chair versus looking at you know fucking pictures on a computer, uh, you know, and all these all these different places and times uh, these pictures were taken. You know, so. Um, Merci encore les gars pour avoir fait ça, c'est vraiment incroyable. So uh, that's it guys, thanks again uh, for watching, and uh, like I said, check out I think the STM Boutique on uh, Google, I might be able to get this book there, so I don't know. Take care, bye bye.